Did you know that NL has actually appeared in Wano? I'm 100% serious, by the way. This video is not clickbait. This happened, and I'm gonna show you how and, and when. But here's a clue. It was not recently. However, NL has been featured in Wano, just definitely not in the way that you'd expect. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam, and this is quite possibly one of the most interesting videos I've ever made. Because today I present to you a tale with more twists than Charlotte Smoothie, making juice out of a woman who stabbed 100 men. Mm. Mm, yes, that's good juice. You know, it really is the hundredth stabbing that really adds the fullness to the flavor. But this is the story of what happens when you take an arrogant lightning man, an overreactive fan base, and a twist of reality so bizarre and unpredictable that Echiro Oda himself would be compared to stare in stunned disbelief. Quite similarly to how Jade Hardy, Denzel Taylor, and N. Hehe <laughs> are staring at disbelief as their status as subscribers of the day, which they obtained by committing the shockingly powerful act of subscribing to the Grand Line Review, thus resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture being administered directly into their YouTube feeds. And if you'd like to be our next subscriber of the day, then hit the button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. Now, something else. Here we have a, uh, <laughs> a rather scantily clad NL. That's because throughout this video, we are going to be dressing him in Wano appropriate attire, based solely on suggestions from you, the Grand Fleet, with our first one being a katana stuck in his exposed chest. Okay, wow, that's a, that's a slightly violent way to begin, but let's do it. To be fair, a samurai is essentially naked without their blade. So before we consider any clothing whatsoever, yes, a katana is definitely in order. And there we have one times katana. All right, so to lay some groundwork here, NL appearing on Wano is not exactly a new idea. In fact, NL appearing anywhere is also highly unoriginal, as throughout the decades of the One Piece, the fan base has consistently theorized that NL will appear anywhere and everywhere, such as Fishman Island, Dress Rosa, and even in your pantry, perhaps hiding in a jar of moon pickles, which apparently exist, and I don't like that. But it's all part of the great five-step cycle of fan theories. Step one. Inception. An idea takes root deep within the mind brains of One Piece fans. Let's use the NL on Dress Rosa example. This ever so questionable thought began when a fan pointed out that this toy from chapter 741 looked mildly like NL, purely based on the fact that they both have similar ear floops. I mean, earlobes would be the, be the more correct thing to say, but I, I prefer floops. But after this comes step two, justification. Having spotted the potential for a bit of that sweet, sweet online clout, fans then dig deeper for meaning. For example, this toy is thinking, Straw Hat Crew, what are they doing here? Which makes sense because NL, he hasn't seen them since Skypiea, hence the surprise. Furthermore, earlier on in the arc, Luffy had also made NL's trademark shock face when he saw Sabo, which is certainly Oda clearly foreshadowing NL's presence on Dress Rosa. But most importantly, how did he get to Dress Rosa? Well, that was explained also, although I use the word explained very, very liberally. But according to a very outside of the box idea, NL rode back down to Earth on one of Fujitora's meteors before finding himself face to face with Sugar and becoming toyified. Step three, headcanon. Now that we have a working theory of how the ridiculous idea functions, we now commit it to headcanon and continue to read One Piece blissfully assuming its correctness. That is until we hit step four, which is disappointment. The stage where it is revealed that the ridiculous fan theory was nonsense all along. And in this particular case, the toys turned back into various people and one gorilla. But Welp, wouldn't you know it, NL is not there. This is also usually the step where people start calling Oda a bad writer for not implementing their headcanon, before swiftly moving on to step five, conveniently forgetting about how wrong they were with this idea before moving on to the next piece of raving lunacy. And I know step five, and it has a long name, but we've got to be scientifically accurate here. That is the cycle of One Piece fan theories. However, we've got a bit of a shock happening on this particular occasion. Pun, honestly not intended, but you're gonna think it's intended anyway, so you know what? intended. But when it comes to NL in Wano, the crazy fans were technically correct. Also, when it comes to fans, our next NL dress up prompt is, NL should get a samurai mustache. And admittedly, I wasn't entirely sure what this was, so I looked up samurai mustache and found what I'm going to call a very bold image worthy of a thunder god. So I went with that. All right, great. Now he has a sword and facial hair. Maybe we'll actually start dressing him soon, but I make no promises. But what was the inception of this amazing NL on Wano idea? Well, step 
1 comes to us courtesy of the ending of chapter 1004. Here, Oda presented us, as he often does, with a very tantalizing silhouette. In this case, it was a mystery character present during the raid on Onigashima, with most people's thoughts immediately heading to the standard answer of Hiyori or even the tinfoil explanation of Toki. But within some very, very special mind brains, another thought formed altogether. You'll notice that this silhouette has a very distinct, I suppose what I'd call some form of floop. Dangling suspiciously in line where human ears would generally appear on heads, and it certainly did not take long before an artistically inclined fan drew Oda's full silhouette, revealing this mysterious presence to be the one and only God and L. Now, in case you're under the illusion that this is some, some kind of joke, well, you're only mostly correct. Whilst the vast majority of fans dismiss this as a case of the lols, there was a powerful segment of online denizens who moved straight on to step two, justification. With our first primary argument being the classic, why not? Which is eloquently summarized via Reddit with the following post. Why can't it be an L? Maybe you can't think about a good reason for him being here. Oda might have a whole badass story prepared which will blow our minds. I strongly believe it's neither Toki nor Hiori. Hiori would be a pretty boring reveal for an end panel and Toki wouldn't contribute anything to the story nor to the fight, unless she uses her powers to port Kaido five billion years in the future or something like that, which is actually a surprisingly relevant point. Why can't Toki just zap Kaido a century or two into the future and save Wano? You know, completely deny Kaido's existence in the current timeline and make him the problem of a future generation, which is also known as the climate change solution. And speaking of climate change, this is going to be our first justification for this here picture thing being an L. Because earlier on in chapter 1004, Oda dropped a juicy, juicy line in the mouth hole of one Nami who stated, I need stronger lightning. Mighty convenient that Nami flagged the need for strong lightning in the exact same chapter that ends with a potential lightning god showing up. A very clever piece of foreshadowing from Oda there. From here, the desperation to get Enel on Wano led to forming a connection between he and Fukurokuju, a man who also has rather notably elongated ear floops. Furthermore, if you look at Fukurokuju when he was younger, his head was less like an aubergine and more akin to that of an egg, which is also how Enel's head happens to be shaped, as well as almost literally everyone else's. But that doesn't matter because the idea became that Enel was Fukurokuju's son and that 10 to 20 years from now, Enel's head would also grow and become super, super long. But that, that is not enough. And we also need a thematic justification for why NL is on Wano. And we also need to keep dressing him, so here's our next prompt. I think he needs a badass Kaido leather jacket, complete with horns. And you know, I can't help but feel that Kaido was going through a bit of a rebellious phase with this whole leather jacket thing. But I suppose NL could be infiltrating the island as one of the beast pirates, so then yeah, let's go with it. I mean, he really doesn't look too out of place at all for the very questionably dressed crew of Kaido. But thematic justification for Enel's presence was quite hastily made. Much like a group of drunken mates drawing over the face of their temporarily unconscious comrade. It was brought to our attention that Wano and Skypea are directly tied together through Wano being known as the Country of Gold and Shandora being known as the City of Gold. Part of Enel's design was also incorporated into the Oniwa Banshu member Raijin. And in fact, there was even a thought that Raijin was Enel himself. Here guys, I want to share info with you. I believe one of the ninjas, the one that is on the catfish is Enel. Just look at his back, how many characters can have it. And after research, the god riding catfish is Thunder God. I really think we have something here. Cheers, PS, can someone put photo of him in comment section, thanks. So there you go. Further adding to the NL on Wano lore. I imagine he joined the Oni Wabanshu to serve under his father, Fukurokuju, and instead of lightning, he adopted fire for, for reasons. Oh, and also he really likes catfish now. But furthermore, Enel having gone to the moon was perfect because the Kozuki clan, and in fact, Wano in general, is directly tied to the moon through the house crest and even the kanji for moon in family names, specifically Kozuki and Amatsuki. But so what? Moon symbology is everywhere and gold, well, it's a common substance. I mean, it isn't. By definition, it's quite rare. But it's like commonly rare because, because it, it pops up in a lot of places, just like an L apparently. But the wildest justification for him being on Wano came in the form of one of the most intriguing deep dives into, into the pit of speculation that I've ever witnessed, which is 
suggests the following. The best clue that would make sense for Enel to show up I have come across is the connection between the Japanese gods of nature, Raijin and Fujin. A Raijin's appearance is an obvious influence on Enel's design, and Hyogoro made a point earlier in the arc that Luffy's Gear 4 bore a resemblance to a god of Wano, which closely resembles a Fujin. It could make sense if Luffy's form shows some sort of connection within him to Wano, and that the same could be said of Enel. These Japanese gods' mythos are connected to storms, and the powers Kaido has displayed in his dragon form seem very familiar. There could even be some connection so far unknown to Luffy's father's suspected weather storm powers, and Wano's obvious connection to the hidden history of the One Piece world. But that may be an even bigger stretch to connect dots. Or this could all be wrong, and I'll look really dumb when the chapter comes out. And as it turns out, it was the second. Or was it? Because as much as I've made a mockery out of this idea so far, these people had no idea just how right they were. Also, Anel here still needs clothes, so let's do that. A propeller hat. Ah yes, the iconic traditional Japanese propeller hat. It would be awfully suspicious for Anel to be wandering around Wano without one of these, so thank God, who I guess is Anel himself, that we had this suggestion. This is probably some of the worst work I've ever done. Now look, I'm no artist, but this is bad even by my standards. But very conveniently for a man wearing a propeller hat, this whole NL on Wano business took flight and is arguably still soaring with the various pieces of fan art, fan animation, and memes spawning from its very existence. Most of which were very self-aware and not at all taking this idea seriously. I particularly enjoy this one featuring NL as Cheems, or I suppose Cheems as NL. But to demonstrate how much of an impact this idea had, this theory even spawned its own parody theories. A great example is the Virgo on Wano parody, whereby a user hypothesized that the mystery silhouette from chapter 1004 was in fact Virgo because the ear loop perfectly resembled Virgo's face with a spoon hanging off the side quite the jocular response. However, on this occasion, it was we who were destined to be the Jokers. And you know, if I had some sort of clown makeup, this is exactly where I'd be putting it on because that is exactly what I am. I denied any connection between NL and Wano. I chuckled arrogantly at the thoughts of all the theorists, which sounded something like this. Ho, 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 ho. But after a long rambling video thing, guess what? I was wrong, but so were the theorists because they had it backwards. Enel didn't come to Wano during Wano. Enel had been there in the past. And as it turns out, Enel does have a connection to Wano, just not where and when and how, or even who you'd think. And the crazy thing is this connection dates all the way back to 2004, which for some context was just after Skype here. I believe we were in Water 7 at the time, but this ultimate piece of information comes to us courtesy of the real life organization Enel, an Italian multinational energy company whose name stood for, and excuse my awful and let's be real non-existent Italian, but it stood for the Ente Nazionale per l'Energia Elettricia. And in 2004, Enel performed an action that would flummox One Piece fans over 18 years in the future, when it joined the World Association of Nuclear Operators, also known for short as WANO. And that utterly blew my poor, poor, simple mind brain. Enel is in WANO. And to celebrate, we need to finish dressing him with our final prompt being, I want to see him wearing high heels. Yeah, sure, I've, I've really got to start vetting these suggestions. But we got to give the fleet what they want. And in this case, the fleet want to remove the L in that word and just become feet. So sure, here's some fancy high heels. Sorry, wait. There is no right way to hold it, it sucks. And I think what we've rather accidentally done here is create Dellinger. The horns, the hat, the heels, we've just basically put Dellinger in a leather jacket. That's that's what we've accomplished here. I should also say that at the time of this recording, the silhouette from chapter 1004 still has yet to be properly revealed. So you know what? Sure, I am ready and willing for NL to emerge any week now and prove me wrong in regards to his current whereabouts. So we're gonna chuck a very skeptical bookmark into this one and temporarily close the Tome of madness that is NL on Wano. Meanwhile, let's open the Tome of Goodness with this next video, because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series, so I look forward to seeing you there.